All righty. Well, welcome to uh, January 23 of Team Talk Tuesday. It's our first Team Talk of the new year. So um, we're going to change up the format just a little. We're actually going to add a little section. Hopefully I have enough time for this each time. But we typically do what's new in Teams and then highlight a feature and do a question and answer. But I'd like to add uh, what's coming in Teams because maybe something over the next 30 to 60 days of what's coming because there's some things that's coming out that might change even how you use Teams. So it'd be nice to know ahead of time uh, what to expect before that shows up. So anyway, let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll jump right into what's new in Teams. And I'm going to share my computer sound just in case we need that. And let's just show this screen. All righty. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into Teams. And the first though, four things is actually has to do with chat. So in your chat section, let's say that I have a chat here um, and we no longer need this chat group. Rather than having it move down, now you have the ability to actually delete the chat, either individual or the chat group. Now, it only affects what you see, the other people in a group or the other individual will still see that chat. So I'm going to go three dots and it says, hey, well, I want to delete this chat. Uh, you need to delete anything you've shared and all that, but the other people, um, it won't affect the other people. So I'll say, yes, delete that. It'll remove it from my list of items. Uh, the second thing I'm going to, um, I can create a chat uh, with a group or a distribution list. So, and when I come up here to a new chat, now it says a name, an email or a group. So if I know of a distribution list or a group, if I say like MU do it, oops, let's spell that right. It will go out and find any groups that have been created or any distribution list. So I can actually chat with a group or a email uh, distribution list. I'm going to move you to the other side here. Okay. Uh, the next thing, uh, the new feature that's been added, if I come up here to the top again and I say I'm going to um, click on new and it's going to like recommend people maybe I've been chatting with. So if I, as you notice here, when I click on that, it'll bring up a some recommended people. If I select a T, some people that I've been uh, chatting with recently, it'll bring up that list. So. That's kind of a little AI built into that. The last thing that's new with chat, again, I can delete a chat now for those of you getting on here. Uh, if I have an individual or group um, here, if I have Heather here, I can always delete that chat or even the group. It won't affect the people on the other end, but it will affect what I see. But the last thing, let's say that Heather has sent me a message and it's maybe after hours and before I forget, I want to reply to that, but I don't want her to, I don't want to send it uh, until business hours. So what I might do is reply to the message here. If I right click on the send button, I can send it at a scheduled time. So I can select a time maybe tomorrow between eight and four or something and then set that. And then it won't get sent until that time. So I could go ahead and type it up, right click here and say, let's send this at a scheduled time. The next thing that's new is under a post. Um, they've given us the ability to let's I saw some things for oh uh, yeah, and the do it. So let's say some people have sent something out here on do it. And on the emojis, you had the thumbs up, harp, laugh, and now they've added uh, an expanded reaction. So I, I can click on this little plus and there's a lot of you can a lot of emojis pick out here. You can filter like, you know, you can go to that section or something fun. Maybe I say 100. Like I agree with you 100 percent. So I can just click on that and it'll give that uh, emoji this reaction to this uh, post. So that's something that's been added. Some things that's been added in form. So I'm going to go out here and uh, office.com and let's just go down to forms. Here's forms here. I have some forms in here. Here's my demo form. 
So one thing you can do now with forms, when you use a choice, like a multiple choice, you can actually use images. So if I say a multiple choice, I can say, <clears throat> what do you think about this? What, what is this image? What is this image? And now I can select an image and I can either insert an image or even a video. So if I say an image, if I have one, I can upload it or go out to one. I can go out to do a Bing search like, uh, let's see what a heart looks like. I can do a search and I can say, um, here's one. Kind of a cool looking one. Add that. What is this image and have give multiple choice? So this will be good. Um, you know, maybe if you have anatomy or something, you can ask questions using images or like I said, you can add videos. OK, so some kind of graphic. The next thing, of course, uh, they're continue to enhance the theme. So any of your um, PowerPoint has. Got that. OK, so if I click on themes in here. Uh, I can see different themes. Some of these are kind of moving, which might be. Uh, like these are kind of moving, might be a little disturbing, but anyway, there's just more, more themes. So it's just kind of I don't know, thousands of them. So if you want to spice up your uh, polling, your forms, you can do that. And then finally, within forms, collect responses. So I'm going to click on collect responses. And now it has a little preview here. So anyone who can respond, that's more of an anonymous. Uh, only people in my organization and then specific people in my organization. And then you, you can edit your response here that you send out by email. You can use um, this QR code. And I notice they enhance the border, which is good. So yeah, I can download this and make this available so people can use their phone or tablet during a maybe a presentation and, and answer questions. And then of course you're embedded. Okay, and you can shorten the URL. So those are just some enhancements on the collection res collect responses. The last two things I will show you within a meeting. And let me close this. This background's kind of um hard to follow but we are in a meeting and let me bring my meeting back over hopefully you can see this but one thing i can do is i could come up here and i can add of course <clears throat> let let's add a reactions you know what while i'm in a meeting i cannot add an application <clears throat> but I'll just mention this. If you use polling within your meeting, you can add the polling app before your meeting. And then you can have some instant polls that, you know, kind of a thumbs up, thumbs down. You can give an instant poll. Also, you're able to do multiple questions within the same poll. It used to be where if you wanted a poll, uh, like two different questions, you'd have to have two different polls. But now you can have multiple polls within the same polling at the same polling time. So I'll just mention that. <clears throat> All righty. Uh, the last couple of things I will mention as far as what's new in Teams. Now in Teams, if I go back up to my demo here, people, you know, there's sometimes where we want to share files with everybody in our team, but then there's other times where like, you know what, I only want some people in my team to have access to say this folder. In the past, we had to go out to SharePoint and then you could go into that folder or channel and you could restrict access. Well, now you have the ability to manage access within Teams. So let's say in the general channel, I want everybody to have access to everything to be able to edit except for this recording. So I could come here now select recordings select the three dots are uh, more options you know it's famous here in microsoft 365 three dots and here's now we have manage access now by default when you have a, a team the owners have owner access visitors with the pencil with the line through it they can view it but members by default can edit so what i could do is drop that down and say i only want my 
members now to only view this or maybe visitors. I don't want them to view it at all. I can stop sharing. And then you could still also um, get more restrictive if you come into advanced and there's more settings. But I just want to show you, you can do those things now within Teams without having to go out to SharePoint. Um, for those of you who use bookings, <clears throat> we have a new feature in bookings. Again, so if I go out to Microsoft 365 and I'll just go down, I've gone into bookings already, so I'll just go down here to bookings. I'll click on my booking. What we can do now on our services that we offer, I do this for training like a 30 minute or an hour service. If I have multiple people that I want to book, so if I have a service that needs, uh, say, Jim and Janice and myself all to be in the same booking, and so it looks at all of our calendars, now we have that ability. So I'll just find out whatever service I want to use. I'm going to edit that service. Now you can see there's some new features. Assign staff. You used to only have to you used to only look at one staff calendar. Now I can say multiple staff. So everybody that's assigned to that service, I can say, yeah, these are the people that we need to make sure that are available to do that service. And you can also, we found out, like Ashley here, she wants to wants this to show up on her calendar, but she doesn't want that service to look at her calendar, whether or not she's available. And so there's a way that you can go into the staff and say, don't look at my calendar, but I wanted to book this service on my calendar. OK, because she just wants to know that this service is happening. So that's also another thing that can be done. The last thing I want to show you is now that in our tenant, our University of Missouri, I'm going to open this up. When you go to sharing and again, I uh, let me stop sharing my so I can't, you guess you won't be able to see it. But when you go to share and uh, we've had for a while PowerPoint live so we can embed a PowerPoint into our meeting. Well, now just rolled out. I just saw it today right for this meeting. It's Excel live. So in a meeting, instead of sharing my desktop, I can share an Excel document and everybody on my meeting and I can all collaborate on the same document at the same time. I need to check, uh, test that because in the testing phase, I know they had it up to 20 people. So as long as you have uh, no more than 20 people, that would work. And I, I'm not sure if they expanded that, but just know that. Um, and PowerPoint Live is nice. And I'll show you a little bit of that today. But with PowerPoint Live, I can put that in the meeting. Since it's cloud-based, any text in the document, you can change the text into your own language. So if I'm presenting this, at an international meeting, maybe some people are more comfortable in Spanish or French. They can translate the slides in their own language and not affect my presentation. So that's PowerPoint Live, which we'll look at that a little bit today. The next couple things I want to mention, I had mentioned this that uh, now besides just doing what's new in Teams, I wanted to kind of give you what's coming in Teams because some things that is, Teams is ever changing. But some things that are coming up might affect the way you use Teams. And I don't want it to look different. And all of a sudden you're like, well, where's my stuff at? OK, so the first thing I'm going to show is the Teams meeting toolbar is getting a little overhaul. OK, so we are in a Teams meeting now. And here's what the Teams meeting looks like right now. We, you know, we have people, chat, reactions are right here. And there's some things to view and stuff is over here. If I click on more, everything's kind of just kind of spread out. Let me give you a, an example or an illustration of what the new Teams meeting toolbar is going to look like. What they're doing is they have the chat people, the raised hand. So if you need to raise your hand, they pull that out here. You still have your reaction. The view button is here. So you can have the different, you know, the layout view. And then when you click on more, it's more organized and departmentalized. So if I go to here, I see settings, but I also see record and transcribe. I see that here, uh, the language and speech, but, and I'm going to show you this today, but under settings is the accessibility where you can have dedicated people doing like sign language and stuff. So, um, but anyway, 
this new interface is going to be coming out, I'd say in the next month or so, it's in the final testing. OK. Um, another thing that's coming out soon is if you've used. Out if you used one almost go to one drive, one drive on the cloud. I could always come to one of my folders and let me just pick out. Oh, I don't want to do, I don't want to do my desktop. I'm going to pick out. This, these drop files. I'm going to pick out a folder. Now, when I do that, I can request files and, and receive an, an address, a web address, and I can post that web address. When I post it, when people upload files to that, it automatically will drop it into this folder and they don't know where it goes. So it, it's a secure way to collect files. And we've had that for a while, request files, and you're able to um, re request files from people, but you could only do it in OneDrive. Now they're coming out with a way to do that in SharePoint, which is Teams. So you're you're going to be able to use Teams uh, and go to a folder. Let me see if I have any other folders in here. Or you can just simply, you know, you can come up here and I can say I want to create a folder to, uh, to uh, request files, whatever you want to call that folder. So once that folder is there, I'm going to be able to come here and I'm going to be able to re request files. Also, make sure that's not here yet. It's not here. So that's something that's um, going to allow us to to request files within a team, and they don't need they don't need to be a member of your team. So you could send this to students that you don't need to make a member of your team, but that's a way they can dump files into a folder in a channel that that you use maybe for class or research, but anyway, that's coming soon. All right, enough about that. Let's get into, I have just a few things here. Highlighter feature, and I'm gonna take my time through this. I don't have much uh, here, but I just wanna make sure people are aware of the, some accessibility that we have in Microsoft 365, okay? And the first thing I'm gonna do, let me minimize all this. I'm gonna go into Word to show this. Uh, already had word. Let me go to a new document. And again, as um, as we go along, let me. See, I don't. I haven't looked at the call. So, Mr. Darren, I see you're the only one on the call. So, if you have questions, oh, and Aaron's on here as well. So, if you all have questions, or anybody else that comes on here, if you guys have questions as we go along, uh, be sure to ask. Or if I'm not clear on it, the first thing that surprisingly people aren't aware of is the uh, dictate. This is available in PowerPoint and in Word, and you can do it on the desktop app or you can do it in uh, the web app. Uh, right now, I'm just going to show you in Word on the desktop app. So on the home screen, and I use this a lot because I, I don't type very well. Here's the dictate. So when I click on dictate, I'm going to go ahead and pause this first. And let me just bring this to, okay. Uh, here's the settings for dictation. I'm going to be speaking English. You can speak. There's different languages here. There's some preview ones they're working on. Here's the ones that are, that are uh, active. I'll, I'll keep it as United States. Uh, make sure you have the right headset. You can have it enable auto punctuation. And here you can see my mic is working. Uh, filter sensitive phrases. OK. But another thing is under the help. Help is uh, helps you, of course, know how to use dictation like on the formatting, I would say bold. You know, after I uh, enter something, I'll say like bold that or underline that. Uh, here's some editing phrases, undo, undo that, or delete that. Some mathematic symbols, so currency. So this is how um, you, how you would speak to dictate it. Also, you don't have to tr train this. Um, I know like Dragon Naturally Speaking, you had to go through a series of training. Surprisingly, this dictate from Microsoft, it holds the world record for accuracy. And I have, to, I have some friends down in down south, some in Georgia, and they have the southern accent, and they said it picks up on there. So I, I don't know how that works, but uh, can't find the dict. Okay, here's some more information under help. So let me just, we'll just try this. Uh, again, usually when you start dictate, let me just close this and I'll show you. It'll start right up. So I'll come right here. I'll hit dictate. 
it's listening and hear it. So now we are dictating uh, our sentence. New line. This is something really important. Bold that. New line. This is something really important. Bold. I'm not getting to bold that. Do you guys see that? Let's try this again. New line. New line. This is something really important. Bold that. All right. Well, I'm not going to try that anymore, but play around with that. <clears throat> and now let me turn this off. I can also say pause dictation. Yes, that's Paul. And it might be because I'm using my mic. I'm surprised it's picking up. I'm using the same mic in our meeting as I am on dictation. And normally when I do this, I haven't had this much problem with it. Uh, but this is dictation. Uh, like I said, you can use it in PowerPoint and Word on the desktop and web app. So hopefully you all have had experience with this. The next thing uh, that people use is called, it's read aloud. So you can have uh, information read to you. And let me just go back. Let me get a different document. My training sessions. Here we go. Here's some of my training sessions. So um, let's see if you all can hear this because I did when I shared my screen, I shared my computer audio. But if I go over here to review, here is my read aloud. It'll uh, it'll speak it to me. And I think it's also this is also available in Excel. It'll read the cells to you. Intro to MS Forms, November. All things OneDrive. I don't know if you all can hear that or not. <clears throat> let me open this up here on you, you all. Can you all, let me turn on my chat. I can chat. hear it. You can, can hear it, it. okay. Clear. Yeah. Good. Good. <clears throat> so if I do read aloud again, sorry. Intro to MS Forms. So you could speed that up. Under the settings, I leave it as a female voice. Uh, you can also change that to the male voice and the reading speed. If you're more comfortable with the male voice here, let me drop that down. <clears throat> and the reading speed, I mean, increase that. We'll see what we get here and play it. Intro to MS Forms, November. All things OneDrive, November. Okay, that's a little fast, but you get the idea. Uh, let me slow that down, back to my female voice. So that is with um, read aloud. Along with that, we also use um, immersive reader, and that's under view. But with immersive reader, and this will be a good example, if I click on immersive, uh, the view tab, immersive reader, now at the top, I can adjust my the column width. You know, uh, right now it's on wide. I can make it just moderate. You know, however you want to view it, whatever is easiest. That was on wide. I can change the color, the page color. Uh, some people have black on white is not as easy to see. Something maybe yeah on, on black or whatever is the easiest on your eyes. You can change adjust that. Okay, line focus. Um, uh, we've uh, we've adopted kids and we have one that. She gets overwhelmed as she sees the whole thing. And so we can narrow that down to like to one line, three lines, or even just five lines at a time. And then um, then when you, you have it read aloud to you, it will adjust or you can scroll through with these arrows here. That's a line focus. And then the same thing with the text spacing, you can space out the words. You can even break it down by syllables. Okay, kind of hard to say. Oh, here's branching. So you can break down. And then along with this line focus or anything else, I could have it come in here and I could also have it read aloud to me. Preview, computer slash mobile, theme, settings, collect we'll responses, have it go down the next line who can here. respond, collaborate slash duplicate. Type of questions. So as you see, that'll scroll down. Branching. Responses. Uh, okay, let me Forms and oh, read aloud, let me turn that off. Line focus, none. So this is immersive reader that's uh, again built in to um, PowerPoint and into Word. Let me and then I can click on close immersive reader. 
one thing that I mentioned to people is the um, the quick access toolbar. Normally, that is right here at the top. So th some things that you usually use. So if you're going to use, for example, Read Aloud or Immersive Reader, what I tell people, what, what I, I mentioned to them they might do, let's drop this down. And I want to show this rather than at the top, let's show this below the ribbon. So now my quick access toolbar is here and I can drop this down and I will say show more commands. And rather than my popular commands, well, let me just see what was in there. OK, so the things that are kind of popular, read aloud is popular, so I can just select that here if I wish and it, it'll be right here. But if I want to do immersive reader rather than going through uh, the review button and all that, I can come here, say more commands and find all my commands. Now I can it's alphabetically. I can either scroll down or I can just start typing immersive reader. Here's immersive, but here's immersive reader here and I add that to my quick access toolbar. And now I have it right here. So if it's something I'm going to be using a lot, I'll, I can have it on my quick access toolbar. I'll go here. I'll click on immersive reader and then that that'll bring that up and then I can just have it, you know, go ahead and have it read aloud. Or if I'm right here and I just need something read to me. Intro to MS Forms, November. So the quick access. All things OneDrive, November. Sorry, the quick access toolbar is a, uh, a handy feature to have and you can find other commands. Let's say that I'm in the view, another way to get to it, say focus. I can right click on that and I can say add this to the quick access toolbar. So you don't have to search for it. I could easily come here, add it, and then it shows up here at the quick access toolbar. Okay, and then I can right click and take it away. So that's just another tip. If you're, if you need, typically use something, especially with accessibility, you can always right click on it and then um, add it to your quick access toolbar here. Okay, some other things I wanted to show you is in the new stream. So stream is where all the videos and audios uh, for Microsoft 365, it uses stream to play it. So any audio or video you save in your OneDrive or in SharePoint, which is Teams, you could have it automatically generate a transcript for you. Plus you can do, um, you can do um, chapters and let me just show you what I'm talking about here. So I can go out to my OneDrive. Let me just go out to OneDrive. I'll pull it open on uh, my file explorer, but you can always let's go out to the cloud. Uh, let me just go to let me go to office.com. That'll be the best way to show you. I'm in OneDrive here. OK, so let's say I save some files on OneDrive and um, anytime you do a recording by default, it goes under recordings. So if you're in a, in a Teams meeting and you do a recording, it, it'll save it in here. Okay. So here I have a MP4. It's a video. If I open this up, it will open up in stream. Okay. This is Microsoft Stream. And I'm going to stop this before it starts playing. Up at the top, it's showing me, hey, you have a video set settings here. What I would do is just click on that. And here's transcripts and captions. I could expand that and I can say, hey, can you generate a transcript of this video or an audio file? Would you generate that for me? And it'll do it for you. I'm going to go ahead and click on generate. And English, and that's the only one because, well, there's other ones, but it'll pick out my primary language that I, I have set by default. So I'm going to say generate. Now in the past, what you would have to do if you wanted to make edits to that, you'd have to download it, make your changes, and that's why there's an upload button. But now you can edit it in line and I'll, because this will take a little bit to do, but I'll show you another one that's been done. You can also create chapters. So chapters will allow you, let's say during the video, you might say, yeah, at this point we were talking about this topic at this section we'll talk about 
you know, something else. So kind of like a table of contents for your video. So let me pull up one that I've already done this on and you can see what this looks like. I think I did the next thing, next one. So let me open up this one. So here is one that I've already done. And so you will see, let me close this and close, stop, pause this. So since this has been done, now when you come to this video, it says, okay, here's the transcript, here's the chapter. So I can click on transcript. Here's the transcript of the file. Like I said, in the past, you had to click download, make changes. If, if this was a meeting with multiple people, it would have who's speaking, who's speaking. So here I'm the only one speaking, so it just has me. So if I click on this, it'll go to that part of the video and start playing the playing the video. Oops, let me play it. Okay, well, good uh, morning, everyone. Today we're I could talk then go down to another drive. all things part one. Of it, click on it, and it's going to go to that part of the video. Migrated box files and then I can also edit the university to make any kind of box files but, over to. But it's it's pretty. Accurate. And then you could take those right. files and folders and move them wherever you wish. As you can see, I've. Uh, and I also mentioned the chapters, so. At 240, you know, people come here and they just click on this if they just want to see that part of it, how to manage the backup. They could click here and it'll go right to manage that backup. So that's what a chapter is. But again, there's nothing special I have to do um, to, to for this to happen. I just have to have a video file or audio file saved in my OneDrive or in SharePoint, which is Teams. And then I could just come out here Click on it and have it generate. Let's see if that's it's it doesn't look like it's done yet. Because if when it is done, yeah, when it is done, you'll see the option for a transcript that has been complete. Teams meetings. Yeah, this is something that's really important. And I, I don't have it turned on here right now, but normally I do. Anytime I'm having a meeting, oh, here's some questions. Sorry, I'm glad you asked questions. Is your aud audience is quality today? Uh, your audience is, yeah, that's right. Thank you, Darren. Yeah, it's quality audience, not quantity. If he's on the Teams chat, can others callers dictate on the document? Um, if he's a, if he's on a team chat. Um, if you have a, yeah, so if you're sharing a good question, if I'm sharing a document and, and let me know if this isn't what you're asking. If I'm sharing a document within um, a chat or within Teams, as long as they have Office 365 and I've given them the ability to edit, even though it's in my OneDrive, if, so a chat is still in my OneDrive, but if I say, yes, you can edit it, if they have Microsoft 365, then yes, they can use dictation as this, well. This, this question uh, was related to the dictation in Word, so that when you were dictating in Word, mm -hmm. you had to select your input. But if the input was an, an, an open mic or a hot mic and others could pick up on it, um, like if you, if you weren't using a headset and you had your speakers up on your Oh, okay, right now, I got you. And I started speaking. Yes. Your microphone would pick up what's coming in on the speakers and then put that into Word. But that's, only that... if that's how you have your, your input and output set up for sound. Otherwise, yes. you had to select the input of anybody's microphone. Even if you shared the screen, even if you gave me the controls, I wouldn't be able to make any dictations in that document because it's not connected to my microphone input. Yes, but uh, I see what you're saying, Aaron. So if I have that document pulled up and it could hear your voice coming through my speaker into my mic, I've never tested that, but I assume that would still pick up and start dictating if I had that document open and it could hear your voice through my mic. That's the same thing as somebody passing by and start talking to me. And if, let's say I'm using my webcam and not this headset. My webcam has a microphone on it. If they start talking, I would guess it would pick that up and just start keep dictating. But you know what? That's a good question. Well, I'll have to test that. I'll have to have some of my kids come in here like they normally do when they get home from school, start also, talking while I'm using it, dictating. If you would test it with some users uh, speaking 
Spanish. Also, if some speakers started speaking Mandarin, how would word dictate that? On the, you mean in the, uh, using the same mic? So if I pass it around a mic and somebody comes up there and starts speaking? Right. If they're speaking Spanish, would it write it out in Spanish? And if they're speaking Mandarin, how would that show up? Yeah. And I think when you go to dictate, you have to tell it what to expect on the spoken language. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. Yeah. Good question, though. Uh, these are things I'll have to test. I have a brother-in-law, a brother, a son-in-law who's from the Dominican, but I don't know enough Spanish. Um, we could test I just it. Like but testing these to, these features tested to their limits just to see how far yes. they could go. Yeah. So I get my my monitor shared here. Let me just go back to this document. So here, the expected spoken language is expecting English. So if I have somebody else come up, I'll have to switch that over so it'll expect Portuguese or Spanish. Otherwise, I'm not sure what if I left it in English and they try to speak a different language. Let me just I know Como se llama usted or something. Let's see what that does. Como se llama usted. So it says Como se llama who's dead. Yeah. Who's dead. yeah. Oh, goodness gracious. That's not good. OK, but if I switch that in course, my my Spanish is not the best. Just note that. Let me try this. Como se llama usted? Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Wow. It even does. Look, yeah. I've never tested that, but here's a live test. I think the next the next level that they would work on is an auto um, switching or something. Right. Right. Yeah. Can it auto detect the language and write it in? Yeah. In that. Yeah. There's so many. We're not like, far from that. We're not far yeah. away. Oh, from yeah. Because in the testing, as you saw, I think there's already like at least 70 languages. Right. So they could, um, yeah, even if you say Chinese, if you could somehow say switch to Chinese, but what you're saying is be nice at a, a quorum, have different speakers, and whatever they're speaking is to have it show. Uh, have it dictate that, yeah. Right. But Which right now we know that it can do that with Teams, yeah. like you had just shown us the the translation and interpreter feature. Yeah. But now apply that to Word. It can auto detect a language. Yeah. And I, but it, you're I did. I guess in that sense, in Teams, you're identifying the target language. Yes, that's true. Okay. But one thing that I'll show you in. Um, in a Teams meeting, let's see, is that next? Yeah, in Teams meeting, I could be speaking and it's going to translate it into whatever language you choose. Whichever I choose based on yes, my settings. On okay. your settings. So okay. I'm now that I've said that, let's jump over to that. So here, up at the on your can you can see my screen? Yes. Yes. So under the more options, turn on live captions. It's about two thirds of the way down. Okay. So if I turn on live captions, the spoken language I'm going to be speaking is English. So you put in there what the spoken language is. So when this comes on, oops, let me minimize this stuff so you can see. Okay, so you should be able to see my caption at the bottom. And you and could turn that in, on. This was in the, uh, you, you went to more and then where, how did you get to that where you selected the? It should oh, turn be on about, live captions. I found it. I found it. Yeah. Just start transcription. Yes. Or turn on live cat. Oh, turn on oh, live I captions. See it now. Yeah. So you should see that on your end. Now, just to the right of that, there's three buttons. And now I can click on that and say, change the spoken language. And you can pick whatever language you want me to, that you want to see on your end. I'm going to say Italian. And so I now see attendees a, do not have permission to change the meeting spoken language. Oh, okay. Hang on a second. Let me look at the of oh, the people. spoken language. Yeah, but the one right above but the it, caption, I can. The, yeah. Okay. D okay, so I'm speaking in English, and it's translated into. Well, let me just turn my. Let me change my back. So my caption says Italian. I'm gonna put mine back to English and let you guys play with it. 
Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm no speaking worries. in English, and yours uh, should, yeah, it says this only affects you. So yours should be shown whatever language you selected. Okay. And I selected Chinese. You selected Chinese. So is it showing yes. up in Chinese? Yes, it is. Okay. Darren, you mentioned that yours is grayed out. Um, I'm not sure why, unless I did have somebody who was using a Mac and there was a security feature on that Mac that wouldn't allow that to happen, and I'm not sure why. Oh, what did I choose here? Change spoken language. Oh, I still have mine messed up. Oh, you got it. Good, good. Okay, so now as I speak English, you all should be able to see it in whatever language you uh, you chose. So this is kind of the opposite of what you said. Um, but something else I want to show you is if I have a PowerPoint presentation and I have text on there, you could translate the slide in your own language and I could be still pre presenting it uh, however it was created in English. So that's why I said when it says, how are you presenting? I say I'm going to be in English. If I was in Spanish, then I would say. The change spoken language, I mean that my caption will be in whatever language I'm speaking. Okay. Um, at at the top, when I start sharing, instead of sharing the page, I'm I'm going to share my window. I'm going to share a PowerPoint. So anytime you go to sharing at the top uh, where it says. Uh, share. You have an option now for PowerPoint Live. What that does is embed the document into the cloud, and that's what allows you all to change. You can go through the slides at your leisure, but you can change the language. So let me just, I'm going to stick a PowerPoint Live document out here. So you should be able to see the document here shortly. You see the document? Yes. OK, yes. so right underneath the document, you, there's three dots and there's an option to translate slide. And I don't think there's as many. Well, there is more than there used to be. Wow. So you could translate the slide into your language and you can scroll through the slides because I have that. I'm allowing you all to a, a preview. And then you have more things here on the background where I can annotate. But with this, I just wanted to show you how you can turn on the caption and have it in your own language. But the most important thing for accessibility is have, have the ability to have live captions, but also have it in your own language. Was you able to scroll through some of those and change it to your uh, different language? Yes, and okay. the animations that you have in the translate uh, slide transitions are really interesting. Uh, translating them into Gaelic versus Thai, and how the letters move with Gaelic, but in Thai it's just the the individual oh, is that right? words will kind of fade in, fade out. Okay, yeah. So between probably five and six, uh, that is the morph. Yeah, that's interesting. So it depends on the language. OK, so that is uh, with some teams meeting translating the slides. Um, the last couple of things that I want to be sure to show you, I'm going to stop sharing this. I'm going to go back to sharing my um, share my screen. So if I'm sharing my screen, something else that's fairly new, let's say that I'm in a I'm going to open up a PowerPoint. And I'll go back to this cloud, the one that I just was just sharing. One thing that people um, are starting to find, we have our typical PowerPoint presentation, but some people benefit from seeing the, maybe the remote and they can see the presenter. There's a couple ways you can do that. The one way you can do it in PowerPoint now is with Cameo. So if I go to insert, and I'll see if I can do this with the camera because I'm using my camera in the meeting. But here's Cameo at the top. What this will do is take my camera and it'll insert my 
picture right here. Um, let me enable that. And let me go to my camera format and get, let me see. I'll use my other camera. Let me see if I can use this other camera on this side. If not, I will flip open my laptop and use my integrated camera. Let's just do that. Okay, bear with me a sec. Let me get that back up. I'll use my integrated camera. May not look very good, but let's see. Integrated camera. And I'll show my picture. But what I can do now, this will show up on the slideshow. I can make that uh, whatever shape I wish. And so now people can see your, you know, your, your expression and you can be talking. Let me make this just this size here. So I can be talking about the slide or I can put myself in the middle of the slide. I can put my, my, my video wherever I wish. Now, if I come down here and do a, a PowerPoint presentation, actually it's on the other screen, but you get the idea, but it's on there. And all that is, is an image. I mean, I can take this and I can copy this and I can paste it on, I can paste it on another slide. And I can move it around. So this is a way um, some people, I don't know if they read lips or just, it's just a way to make yourself more visible in a presentation and you can move yourself around. I mean, a lot of times, you know, it's a small one. I can make this as big as I wish, right? But again, this is just a new cameo in your PowerPoint. Let me just take those little pictures off there. Shut my screen. Uh, a couple of other things. <laughs> We was talking about meetings, and I mentioned this is the accessibility options in our meetings. And hopefully you all can still hear me. I'm going to come up here to more under my meetings. And right now it's just under accessibility. So when I turn this on, I have the option for sign language and then captions. Captions, of course, is at the bottom. And then what this means is always have captions on whenever I start any meeting. OK, normally I do have that on. Uh, I've been told that that's a good idea for training. But sign language here, if I turn this on. I can say manage signers, and so I would type in uh, when I do that, I it asked me who my signers are going to be, and I can have up to two signers, and their videos will say, no matter what meeting, it'll stay larger at the meeting. You know, right now we have a you know, couple of people on my screen, Aaron, you're bigger, but with, with managed signers, they will always be the focal uh, people for me. So whoever needs this, let's say that I need signers, this is a setting for me, okay? So this is what the managed signers would be. Mr. Darren, everybody's got their, oh, uh, Aaron, you're muted. Do you have a question? Um, if you're identifying signers, mm -hmm. like if, if um, had it be motion detected so that if, if two, if speakers are, um, I guess if the focus is shifting between speakers, like if you were to start speaking and then you would be the, the focus on the screen mm -hmm. that would that work with sign? Yeah. So the sign, so the, the presenter would be bigger, but where the people are usually all on the side, they will be, in fact, let me, let me see if I can and make if you one a of those people on the side started signing. Would they, be they won't, yeah, the no, they won't come on the big screen, but okay. they will always be on the side with the list, but they're bigger than the other okay. people that's, uh, let me see if I can. I haven't used this yet, so let me just do this. Yeah. Aaron, Casey, you're going to be my signer. Hey, <laughs> yo. Uh, Aaron, Casey, are you the program project coordinator? Yes, I am. There's also one that says guest. Okay, so I'm going to make you the. Okay, I'm going to say save. Um, so now you are. Oh, that's just for me. But you know what? You are. Let me close this up. You know what? I should make Darren my signer because you you're already bigger on my screen, right? I am. All right, you're getting demoted, and we are going to go see. I I can turn off sign language, but let me go back to accessibility. 
manage my signer, and I'm going to take you off of there, and we'll put Darren. Yeah, Bert. I found you, and I'll say save that. And now, so he will always be here. No, and then if you, you know, if you change, you know what, let me spotlight myself. And that's something else I don't know if I showed you, but if you click on somebody, you can spotlight that person. I'm going to spotlight it for everybody. Okay. On my, I don't know what it looks like on your screen, but Darren should still be my signer. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to exit spotlight. Okay. Um, and yeah, to give you a little um, information about this oh, yeah. sign language mode, Somebody sent me an article, and we'll probably do this next month as far as the the key feature. At Microsoft, this guy has a zero email inbox for 25 years. He gives everybody the tips on how to manage your email, and University of Florida did this today, and I, we'll probably do it next month. Anyway, let me – I'm sharing my screen. I'm going to minimize. What happens when I minimize? I guess, I guess this – Darren is just for me, so I don't – see that okay but let me show you this video of sign language the sign language mode the promo that microsoft has for it. let's see if you all can see it and hear it i hope but there's nothing to hear. well hang on so let me play this and see if it's bigger here we go all righty okay did y'all did y'all hear that okay um actually no i didn't hear it i no. Oh, you didn't hear it. I didn't okay. hear it, I just, but I know sign language. So I was just oh, that's anyway. amazing. Well, cool. So what they were <laughs> oh, saying I is I'm for those. the only one who can understand this part right now. <laughs> yeah. So for those of us who can't understand, it says, like I said, uh, even with uh, highlighted or feature speaker, it'll be, be moved to a different part of the screen and that their video will be the highest quality, uh, the sign language video. So they'll be maintained on the video feed. So let's see, uh, I, I've only left you all five minutes for questions, but um, yeah, there's a lot of things that the person who asked this, they said, I didn't even know there was a dictate feature. So be sure if you don't use dictate now, go out there and do some testing. Um, yeah, and I will, I will kind of keep an eye out and see if, you know, if like you said, Aaron, if people could walk up and speak different languages, that would be something. <laughs> We're getting there. Getting there, yeah, because it's all available. Just the auto switching um, between them will be would be the key. So, yeah, I'm uh, I'm thinking about some people I knew years ago who who used sign language, and and one friend of mine who who was uh, she was blind and deaf, and okay. she was a computer science major, and watching her fingers fly on the keyboard, and then she had a a device that would punch the I mean, her screen reader, I suppose, would would transfer that into this device that would punch it into Braille so that she's wow. reading it. Yeah, I mean, she had no monitor, so I just yeah. trusted that that's what was happening. <laughs> no monitor, no mouse, but she was always on the keyboard. And but I used tactile yeah. sign language with her, but uh, something like this to dictate. I knew that she had a. a number of students on campus who would assist her going from class to class and she had a similar device it looked like a tty with that um punch pad for the okay. for the braille yeah but i guess it was 20 something years ago and this this kind of technology is a game changer as yeah, far Darren as Darren just said that, that braille technology is amazing and i should yeah, yeah uh I should have checked with Darren or, or those who utilize this more than I do. I have a friend that I that when I worked at the university on campus, I work from home now, but I was at the vet school for 35 years and I had a guy that lives in Sturgeon here with me and I would he's blind and he works at uh, MFA over by the stadium 14 stadium that theater. And I would take him there, but he has his system set up for, you know, uh, accessibility. So I yeah. should find out him. I know there's a lot of other features that I'm not aware of. Uh, within Microsoft yeah. 365, so. Oh, here. 
Darren's asking questions. Does Cameo have to be PowerPoint live? Um, it does not, Darren. Um, so I was just showing you in regular PowerPoint. So um, does it work? It, it works in PowerPoint live, but you could set up in PowerPoint. Cameo on PowerPoint uh, proper would not work within Zoom. Inbox treatment program. Um, it, it should work within Zoom. It, you should be able to just in, uh, insert PowerPoint and then just share your screen and, and show the Cameo. Uh, back on voice dictation, can you command key press? Example, press Alt Space. Oh, I see what you're. I see what you're saying. So if you want to say Alt Space. Uh, do you want to know if that would do that function? Because my guess is the dictation only dictates what I say I would guess. Let me try it. Alt space. Yeah, it just did. Actually, it did out space. So I see what you're saying, Darren. Can I give a commands? OK, yeah, it doesn't appear so. Uh, but again, <clears throat> um, there is suggestive thing, and you know I say no. Let me let me check and see if there's any features that would allow you to voice activate um, those functions. I'm asking for your all's help. If you guys know of any, let me know, and we'll add it to the mix. And I'm going to stop this recording. <laughs>